Uh, and this is the basis for quantum computing, by the way. I mean, you've probably heard about yes. new quantum computers that are I, I have, but I totally don't understand it. Well, so it's the same thing as Schrodinger's cat, whereas we have a bit of information, right? So what are the values that a bit can have? It's like zero or one. That's it. That's like the basic unit of information. And the bit can only have one of those values, like on my iPhone or my uh, you know, laptop. If you look down all the way down into the hardware, <laughs> you can look at the registers. Like when I, was at, when I was at MIT, we actually built a computer uh, in class from scratch. You'll see there's some voltage that says this is a one or this is a zero, right? That's it. All the computing, everything we're doing with video streaming, like all that stuff comes down to having a bit that can be either a zero or a one. It has to be one or the other. It can't be both. Right. So – Quantum computing has these things called qubits, okay, Q-U-B-I-T-S, qubits, which a qubit is like Schrodinger's cat. It doesn't just have a value of a one or a zero. It is in superposition. Superposition means a superset of all the positions that are possible. So how many possibilities are there in, in a bit two, right, zero and one? Mm -hmm. So a qubit is a superposition of a bit, which means it has both values. Zero and one until someone measures that bit. And so theoretically, that's what allows quantum computers to solve problems that are that grow exponentially, that are really big. And we're still in the early stages, but if you think of an exponential growth problem, like like cracking encryption, uh, it can be done by a regular computer. You can set up your laptop to, to crack. It'll take like a thousand years or something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because... You have to go through every single possible value. So if you have 64 bits, that's like 2 to the 64 values, which is, which is huge. Uh, in fact, there's an old story about the, the Indian king and the, the wise man who play chess that illustrates the story of how big that number gets when you have exponential growth. So there was a king who liked to play chess, and no one wanted to play chess with him anymore because he, you know, he kept winning. And finally, there's this wise man. He's like, please play chess with me. And the wise man says, okay, I'll play chess with you if – if I win, for the first square in the chessboard, you give me one grain of rice. And then the second square in the chessboard, you give me – you double that, two grains of rice. And you double that to four grains of rice and six grains of rice. So we're doubling in each square, right? Mm -hmm. King's like, okay, sure. You know, no big deal. There's just a bunch of rice, right? And so it turns out when the wise man won, by the time you get to two to the 64, because there's 64 squares on the chessboard – that basically it was more rice than would fit in all of India, right? It, that's an exponential problem. Mm. It just grows so fast. And the reason it grows is there are too many possibilities, right? But now this new thing called a qubit's coming along. And the qubit has both possibilities at the same time. So if you have 64 bits and you take all the possible values of those 64 bits, you've got the same number of possibilities as the grains of rice we talked about. It's 2 to the 64. It's a very big number. It's, it's 18 quintillion, right, is the number. There's a game called No Man's Sky. I don't know if you ever played it. No. So it, was, it became famous because there were, it was one of the first games to have an almost infinite number of planets. That you oh, is this play. the game where it just creates a universe? Yeah, yeah it we just, have, it it's does. It's kind of boring, I heard. Yeah, it was kind of boring at first. I mean, I haven't played it in a while. I just kind of looked at it. But it procedurally generates everything for you. Because there's no way a, a team of, like I was in the video game industry, right? There's no way a team could create 18 quintillion worlds. And it turns out that's exactly the number of worlds they have in that game. Because that is, what, 64 bits. That's the biggest number you can get uh, if you use 64 bits, right? All right. Okay, so come back to exponent. That's exponential growth. It's okay. just too big. And so with a, with a quantum computer, theoretically, and these are pretty new right now, right? Amazon has one. Microsoft has one. IBM has one that you can actually program online. Google has their own. Everyone's trying to figure out how to make these qubits stable and work. But the basic idea, and I, I don't know what number we're up to. For a while, it was like you could only have four bits qubits, kind of like going back to the old – you know, when we were young, the, you know, the the Apple II or whatever came out. And uh, before that, there were these, you know, small 8-bit processor-based uh, kits that people would assemble. And they just couldn't have a lot of data because they just didn't couldn't keep track of that many bits. And that's where quantum computers are today. But the idea is if you can have 64 qubits, you can instantaneously solve a problem that is exponential because you can explore all of those 
at the same time, and then when you measure the result, uh, it, it's all now nobody knows exactly how this works, but the two explanations. Okay, coming back. Sorry, I know I'm kind of okay. wondering a bit. Coming back to Schrodinger's cat, we say there's two possibilities, right? So with 64 qubits, there's two to the 64 possibilities. If they're all in superposition, they have all the possible values of it, um, and and so basically when you measure that, it brings it back. And so physicists call this the collapse of the probability wave. So there's a probability of all these possibilities, and then it comes down to one. And that's sort of the best, uh, one of the accepted ways that people think this whole thing works. Uh, but nobody totally knows. So another guy who was John Wheeler's grad student in, in, at Princeton came up with another idea. And we've heard about this idea from the superhero movies, right? And this is the multiverse idea, right? Yeah. And so basically he said that if you've got Schrodinger's cat, what happens is you're splitting the universe into two different universes. In one of them, the cat is alive. And in another one, the cat is dead, right? So that's the multiverse idea is that when we measure it, we only see one of those two because we're in this universe. But if we happen to be in this other universe – the cat would have been dead, right? The cat is alive here. And so that creates a whole series of possibilities, when you, and which are being used now in, in superhero stories all the time. Right. right? You've got your different versions of Batman, your different mm -hmm. versions of Superman. Spider-Man, yeah. Sp yeah, the famous Spider-Man meme where you have, mm -hmm. like, the, the Spider-Man all kind of pointing at each other. Yeah. Right? And they have the different actors. Uh, so that idea has started to catch on now. Uh, it, it's what I like to call... It's past the 10-year-old test, right? And, and the 10-year-old test is when a scientific idea gets out there so much that even 10-year-olds can kind of understand it because of superhero movies or mm -hmm. because like, like in the 1930s when people, they were trying to explain uh, Superman, like how does Superman get his powers? You say, oh, he came from another planet. <laughs> he came from a planet called Krypton, right? right. So even a 10-year-old in the 1930s could have understood that. But in the 1730s, you couldn't say that. No one would know what the heck you're talking about, right? Right. Right. And so that idea kind of diffused through society. And so that's happening now with the multiverse idea too. It's kind of diffusing, you know, through society in, in this way, through popular culture, you know, and, and, and media narratives and stuff. Look at this. Whoa. Boom. Look how they're sliding all over the place. I mean, that is fucking ice. Yeah. That guy can't stop his car. Look. Look, he's just going to slide in that car behind him. This is oh ridiculous. Is that important? can't stop it. Oh, shit. Boom. And, and that car's going. sliding. They're all sliding. The whole thing is ice.